Welcome to a tour of the Explore the Ocean layer in Google Earth, an introduction to over a thousand photos and videos from over a hundred contributors from around the world, from National Geographic, government agencies, and numerous individual contributors. Let's begin north of the Galapagos by playing the ocean's overview, an introduction to 99% of the biosphere, the ocean. From afar, the world is blue, with an all-encompassing ocean, the source of all life. Without the ocean, Earth would be as bleak, as barren, as Mars or the Moon. Next, an introduction to the waters around the Galapagos Islands. Of all the islands in the oceans of the world, one group, more than any other, has changed the way people look at the planet and the forces that shape it. The Galapagos Islands, the Enchanted Islands, the Islands of Fire, located in the Pacific Ocean, about a thousand kilometers offshore from Ecuador. As a young man, Charles Darwin visited there in 1835 and was amazed by the creatures he saw. Giant tortoises, flightless cormorants, iguanas, all living side by side with fur seals and penguins right on the equator. It became his laboratory for the study of the origins of life. Now come visit an eagle ray swimming near a school of barracuda off of Cousins Rock near James Island. And come see creatures that rely on nutrients from deep sea hydrothermal vents. These scientists are headed 300 miles off the Galapagos Islands to a place known as 86 West. But the ultimate destination is a mile and a half below the ocean waves. There on the seafloor is an unexpected oasis. Fountains of warm water and basking in it, bizarre animals. Welcome to Hawaii. Far below Hawaii's green mountain peaks, the sandy beaches lined with hotels and condominiums, there's another Hawaii. A string of spectacular undersea volcanoes created the islands and continue to add to their landmass even today. Hawaii is geologically young, but it is surrounded by an ancient ocean filled with creatures whose ancestors preceded human beings by millions of years. As our three-hour dive was coming to an end, Kip was the first to leave the bottom, and as I waited for him to ascend to the surface, I saw what I thought was a big chunk of plastic hanging in the water. And then I saw the eyes. It was an enormous octopus. I thought it was a giant squid at first, but then I counted the arms. There were eight, not ten arms. And it was a girl, a female. She was holding a cluster of eggs. Well, for ten minutes I filmed and filmed and filmed, and then I realized there was no tape in the, in the machine. And I finally got my act together. And for the next hour, we literally danced. I moved toward her, and she'd back away. I'd stop, and then she came over to me. You can find many National Geographic Wild Chronicles episodes like this one on Humpback Whales. This is one of nature's most mesmerizing mammals, the humpback whale. The name humpback comes from the signature motion it makes as its back clears the water before a dive. Adult humpbacks average between 35 to 50 feet in length, 
and weigh about a ton per foot. Meet a Hawaiian monk seal. Dive off the coast of the Big Island and see a new island in formation, Loihi. Come to the Mediterranean Sea. The Mediterranean Sea, rimmed by 46,000 kilometers of coast, has been one of the world's greatest trade routes for thousands of years. Its seabed still holds treasures of the Greek, Roman, and Egyptian empires that once ruled from its shores. Amphorae from ancient shipwrecks are scattered along the windswept coast of western Turkey, near Tectus. Discover who lives here, the loggerhead turtle, and monkfish. Discover the deepest ancient shipwreck. Manager for Nauticos asked, how old? The answer suggested a unique find. The ship is Hellenistic in origin, probably dating from the 1st or 2nd century BC. Resting at an extreme depth of 10,000 feet, undisturbed by tides, weather, currents, fishing, dredging, or other phenomena, it is in an excellent state of preservation. Though the exposed wood of the hull is long gone, its cargo of ceramic amphora, lead anchor stocks, and ceramic cookware lie exactly where they fell over 2,000 years ago. Imagine being a young orca, learning how to catch seals. Imagine being the seal. This group that we're watching right now have actually perfected a technique where they're creating a wave and that wave helps to wash the iceberg apart and also to allow the seal to get washed off the ice. After the animal went into the water, uh, we saw that it had been secured by one of the large females. It had it in her mouth. Travel to the Bahamas and visit a shipwreck. This curve in the ocean a rock exists but just below the surface and isn't easily seen. The HMS Endymion, of course, gave that rock its name after finding the rock accidentally. HMS Endymion was a British fifth-rate 44 cannon warship. Went down in 1790. It was a one in a million chance. I'm sure many ships had crossed that part of the ocean before, but this time it was the death of a ship. Do you believe in unicorns? These are the unicorns of the sea, narwhals. A pod of narwhals comes bobbing into a small bay created by a crack in Arctic ice. Narwhals are a unique species of whale. Why unique? Because narwhals have a horn that can grow as long as nine feet. It looks kind of like a tusk. And it's actually an overgrown tooth that grows through a hole in the narwhal's upper lip. No one knows why they have this tusk. They use it for jousting, but it doesn't seem to serve any evolutionary purpose. Watch as a little sub with David Guggenheim inside is attacked by cousins of the giant squid. One of the squid's favorite prey is lanternfish, which are bioluminescent. They create their own flashes of light, and down here, in the darkness, anything bright will attract squid, especially the bright lights of the sun. Deep worker six at nine zero zero nine zero zero. Very thick squid. Roger that. Nine zero zero. If I were a lantern fish, I wouldn't have had a chance. The squid would suddenly appear out of the darkness, blast their ink which they use to confuse their prey, and then try to take a bite of the sub. <laughs> 